And welcome back to another edition of the Monday Morning Quarterback Film Study. We look back at the week that was in Michigan football and focus specifically on the quarterbacks <coughs> with a guy who played that position at the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. It's one of the best. Mm -hmm. One of my favorites. You know, I got jerseys up in my office. This is before we even started doing this show. Of course, of course. Had that jersey up. I even got Sam one. Sam always been my guy. Hey, man, always been my dude, yeah, man. Yeah, always been, always had to rep my guy. Got the uh, the replica version, too. That's right. So we got two versions of that jersey. They ain't ever give you one of the, the authentics. They ain't give you one of your own jerseys. I got a couple jerseys at home. Not nearly as many as I should. Let's just say that. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. Yep. We got to work on that, Michigan. We got to work on that. All right. But you know what this is about, how we do these film studies. We always start them out by saying, with me looking in the camera and making this, this statement, we do not own this footage. And because we don't own this footage, we provide it for you with telestrations strictly for the education, the entertainment, and edification of you, the viewer, and mm -hmm. the listener. We yep. make no <laughs> money, no proceeds whatsoever from this video. But to fund our efforts, we came up with a plan. <laughs> we devised a plan this year where, hey, we set up a PayPal, uh, a PayPal account that you can donate to to fund the film study. That's what we call it, fund the film study. That's how it works. So, no, we aren't making any direct proceeds. Basically like my, a GoFundMe for film study. Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> people say, well, you're making no money on it. One guy says, look, this, this is, you got to figure out a way. You got to find a way to make a way, right? We got to make sure that we keep it. You, you got to keep Devin in the life in which hey, he's accustomed to. I'm right? busy. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> I got stuff to do. You feel me? <laughs> so right there in the comment section, we put a link to the the PayPal fund for the film study is right there. If you want to support what we do on these film studies, just go right there and show some love. And we appreciate you. We'll be back uh, you know, next week doing the same thing. But right now, DG, mm. first of all, I got to give you a lot of credit, man. I turned on the TV. My wife said, there's Devin. We get so proud oh, every time we see you. That's my girl. Yeah. She like me way more yeah. than you. <laughs> every time we see you. You know, sometimes like, ah. I be questioning, you know, I don't know if Sam really in my corner, but she in my corner for sure. Hey, man, we all yeah. in your corner. It's like, man, look at DG. So you did the game Friday night. Yeah. You did that two was a good, games. That, I think that was the best game I called this year. Like, not like the game itself. The game's fine. I'm talking about like me, like my, like when okay. I watch it back, I was like, oh, man, I did a good job this one. And okay. it was a standalone game. That's a big time to do it. Yeah, all man. All the Foxes watching, all the big wigs, you know. I yeah, think I did a good job on that on one. you, and it was Maryland. Who did yeah. Maryland play? Uh, Virginia. And Maryland, it was kind Virginia, of a rivalry yeah. type of thing. You got you got two you got a, two black head coaches and two black coordinators, I believe, or it was something like that, yeah, where it was just like. Who's the for UVA? Uh, I, couldn't I can't remember his name. I try to flush. I try to flush because I'm never going to see them again at ACC, right? Uh -huh. Just at least this year. So I try to flush it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I got you know, got to prepare got so much you can stick you know in the You know what I mean? I got to I flush you. it. But um, I know his name during the game. <laughs> but uh, it was three Bro Broyles Awards winners on there, too. You got That's Gaddis, crazy. you got Loxley, and then you got the head coach for uh, UV. You, see, I know Loxley because I'm going to have Virginia, uh, Maryland again. But I right. can't even think of a coach for well, Virginia name now. Yeah, and the other storyline is Gaddis. Yeah, Gaddis, Gaddis was going to be the UVA coach of Tony Elliott. It had turned it down. Oh, really? Tony he, he yeah. interviewed for it, and the AD <clears throat> told him if he, because he had flew home. That's a lot of connections. Yeah, man. he flew home to think about it, right? Hold on, Tony now. Elliott. Tony you Elliott. He flew in for the interview. Think. Tony Elliott flew in for the interview, did the interview, and didn't take the job. They offered him the job. He didn't take it right there. He said, "I got to go think about uh, it." See, y'all so, almost <laughs> messed your blessing up, brother. You almost lost that blessing. Right? So he flies home to think about it. Yeah. And they tell Gaddis, "Look, if, if he say no, you're gonna be the guy." He Called back the next day and took it. Whew, that's close, right? Because you know that same thing with linguist. Linguist that was supposed to be that was he pretty much signed on to be at Michigan. Uh, he he had already moved here, and then he, he told me the story because I had Buffalo earlier this year. Went to go interview Buffalo, and and uh, he went and he didn't pack a bag. Um, he's you know he packed a bunch of bags. He's like, I don't plan on going back. Like so he coming to take the job mm -hmm. or whatever. And uh, yeah, he got the job there, but he could just stay. Right, so he just stayed or whatever, and and the, the people was moving the stuff in his house as he like calls his wife, tells his wife all that. Yeah, That's so crazy. he wasn't he wasn't he wasn't leaving a chance. <laughs> Hold on, you said I'm gonna be head coach. Hold on, I ain't too many black head coaches. This ain't this opportunity don't come on uh, Willie yeah, Nilly. Yeah, well, but Tony Elliott had been turning down jobs, so yeah. you know he had it like that as the coordinator. I think Virginia's gonna be all right too. You do? I think they're gonna be all right. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he's a really good coach. 
I do so, too. I do too. I but think he's got to get players, bro. And it's I tough when Maryland Elliott. start playing good because y'all fighting for the same kids around that DMV area that got them good players. Yeah, people hear me talk about my man at Purdue right now, Ryan Walters. I, like I Ryan was talking Walters. about Tony Elliott before that. Yeah. Like, watch Tony Elliott. He's going to be that yeah, dude. Yeah, he's so. He's super poised. Like, he ain't overwhelmed or nothing like that. Especially if they give him some time, I think he's going to have a shot. All right, let's get into this game. <clears throat> well, come on, tell me about Michigan. People have been looking forward to this Hello, breakdown. Right? More than any, which is crazy. <laughs> because they love to see their own do bad. That's like, crazy ah, to me. But ah. it's all good. Uh, and that's what, but that's what you sign up for when you play quarterback. You know, when you play quarterback in general, right? Backup quarterback, that's the old saying. Backup quarterback is the, the, the most popular guy on campus type of thing. But at the University of Michigan, the scrutiny of the quarterback position, you know, shows like this and, and, and you know, nationally, especially when they're playing really well. It's it's at all time. It's it's high. No matter what year it is, it's Michigan, right? So you, as a quarterback, you sign on and you expect that. That don't mean you don't block these people who act crazy. You mm-hmm. got to block them still. Mm-hmm. But you know, you just expect it. You expect you to be who they're gonna be. Yeah, man. So one of the things that I love about this as we get into the plays is you can you can <clears throat> give us a good idea of what he's thinking. Because mm-hmm. you idea, right? Yeah. Yeah. You give out because I mean, first of all, he's. It's not like he gonna sit down and tell. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> he of don't course. have time to sit down and tell yeah, us everything he's thinking. He's been there. Right, but you having been there and yeah. played that position in that can, arena, in that arena, can give yeah. us an idea of what he's thinking. And this very first interception, which I, as an outside observer, said, you know what, I understand that. I, really, like that, you did? You can, yeah. Oh, nice. I said that. Un- You've been that, learning some football. That huh? interception. Is understand. I'm not saying it's okay. No, of course. That's what people get confused. Just because I understand how a person can make a mistake doesn't mean I agree with him the mistake. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. people can't separate those two, which is super weird. But yeah, yeah. but th- this one is one that you can kind of spread the blame around. I mean, you yeah. know, you, it's easy. Now I told you some new blame to go around. Yeah, it's a lot yeah. of blame. You I could talk. Go you could talk about him with the read, but you could talk about the route. Of, uh, right for the for not the tight of Roman, end, but of the tight end, yeah. for the tight end, you can talk about the the play design, which yeah. is what Borges was talking about, and then you just got to get credit to the to the the defender, the right? defender, the yeah, credit to the the defense zone on the front side, yeah. uh, man to man on the back side, and then the defender for making a great play. It's like it's a lot that went into that play. <clears throat> I agree. So let's go ahead and bring it up, and you can explain it to the people. Yeah, we got PG. a new little ring, so we're gonna show you this. Right, and then I'm gonna come on the screen in in a different <laughs> form and explain further a, a, another one of the scenarios, like like Sam was kind of just discussing. All right, Devin. So I'll I'll let the play play, and you right. can kind of talk. Us All right. It so a pause bit. there. You got man to man defense on this front side, right? So that's really the truth. Most that matters, right? Man to man defense on the front side, and so a theme for the interceptions. I even talked to you about this, yes, Sam, is depth of the defense, right? Depth of the defense. This play is the same as the play that he threw an interception on later in the game, except it's on a grander scale, like it's it's in the field, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a little different, right? Here, you got 89, who is a guy that sh- it kind of tells you what the depth of the defense is. And so here, J.J. assumes the depth of the defense is not very deep, right? Mm-hmm. So that means you have space behind these guys to throw the ball, which I think that he should have. Because I think this should be a stick route, right? And so a stick route and a stick concept, I'm going to explain it on on another form in just a second on the board. But it's a a quick out and a stick. Now, it doesn't have to be that. This could be where the tight end is just going to post up to draw the attention of that guy so you can throw behind him. But if he's doing that, he needs to be more sound and more sturdy, right? He goes, and and instead of stopping at like the two, one and a half, one yard line, or even the goal line, he stops and kind of like leaks back just a little bit, right? And so it allows the defender to leak back as well. And so it closes the window in the end zone to throw that ball on the back line to, to Ronnie Bell. Now, also, somebody made an interesting point in Monday Morning Quarterback that he could, he could have laid it higher, right? Throw it where Roman can jump and catch it. Right, but for him, what I would be thinking is like he's wide open, so I'm just throw it straight to him. No need to throw it high when he's wide open because the tight end's being covered. But here's the uh, the outline of what it could be when when you're talking about stick and how stick would clear up clear up this read. If it is stick, if it's supposed to be stick, it'll clear up this read a lot. All right, so you see here what Roman is supposed to do. <clears throat> That's what he did. He did a good job. All right, and so now let's go ahead and get to to Devin breaking it down. All right, so you got Roman coming over behind, right? Here, this concept that you see is stick, right? So you got a quick out here, and 
stick is here, it could be here, it could be turned in, it could be run out, right? There are options on stick. So what 89 needs to do is run out because versus man to man, that's when you use this angle of it, right? You run the out route, right? So you should come here, run out, and now the man to man guy will chase you, and now this window is more clear behind him, right? But what 89 does, he goes vertical, he hooks up, right? And that's what you do in zone. When, when it's a linebacker maybe here, linebacker, outside linebacker out here, you hook up and just be big and open, right? But when it's man to man, you gotta run away. And when you run away, he'll run with you and now this is wide open, right? So I'm I'm sure that JJ expected this to be eliminated and now he's wide open behind. But the play that the DB made is an outstanding play, right? So he comes here, he hooks up. The DB is completely engaged with his hands, right? Hands on. And Jay is like, well, he's covering them, right? So I can throw this ball behind him, and as soon as the ball's thrown, he jumps out and makes the play. So it's an outstanding play by the DB, but it can be helped. And what Borgia was saying is you can go hit, swirl, or something like that. But I think, and I would, you know, it's my thought, because of what this guy does out of the motion, I think this is stick. And versus man, you should run away versus stick, which will clear this read up a lot more. You think the tight end didn't read man on that? He might not have read man, and why didn't he read man? Because on the inside, this guy's playing zone, and another linebacker playing zone, and the guy that looked like he was covering Roman, which was a safety, passed him off, and he was also playing zone. Right. Now, was he looking all the way across the field to see if those guys in zone? I'm not sure, but this was man to man, and if this is a stick concept, he should be running away, which will clear this up way more. So zone on the front side, man to man on the back side. That's how I mean. It's a good job by uh, by Bowling Green, right? and I remember I said it on Monday Morning Quarterback. They did a very good job. I had a good plan, but if you read man here and this is stick, he should run away. Now we don't know for a fact if that's the case or not, but he also shouldn't be leaking a little bit. He turned and kind of was kind of like hopping back a little bit. You don't want to do that, but uh, that would clear up the read or what Borges said if it's not stick. Right, but it's gonna be hard to do the hit swirl because you already got the flat coming out, right? But just have something where he moves him out of the way so that this is way more clear. And I know that's not as clear as it could be because it's right everywhere. <laughs> so that that was kind of the explanation there. And so uh, rewind it just a little bit. All right. I want to show you why, and, and when we get to the next interception, why it's the same play but just condensed, the condensed version. At the top, you're going to see Roman coming across the field, and then at the top, uh, you're going to see is is um, Cornelius Johnson running like a, a wide departure post route, or, or it could be a slant just because it's so short. And so that's the same concept, right? Something to hold the depth of the defense, right? And a post, a, a clear out, I, I guess you could say by Roman, with a post behind it, and that's going to come open, right? Uh, Cornelius Johnson is going to come open, but JJ doesn't have the time to get to that. But if I, if I see a guy open right away, I would have thrown it to Roman Wilson too. Nice play by the DB, and I think that this happening, because this is something I don't think he's seen before. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've never seen a guy cover a guy and then jump off and go make the play, especially down here tight. But you got to know, when you're down tight in the red zone, it's everything's condensed, everything is faster, right? And, and so he doesn't even have a long way to go while he's covering them. But I think it can be helped by the tight end doing something different. That's tough, man. On the field, I'm like, I know he ain't just throw that ball right to that guy. But when you look at the film, you look at the all twenty two, you can see, no, nah, it wasn't just him throwing into the chest of a, of another player. Yeah, that's 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 tough. That's why, you know, sometimes, you know, if you've been in a meeting and the coach was like, hey, you know what, not, it's not okay, Devin. Man, but, but... Borges was my coach. He's a butthole. <laughs> he was never like he was never nice. He never say, "Hey, man, I, I, I." Nah, get he it. was understanding. Like Borges, for him to have never played football, he probably played football a little bit. But I'm gonna say he, he, he never he played, played quarterback. He ain't played no dang old quarterback. He's terrible. <laughs> but okay, for Borges to have never played football at a high level, dang I God. guess for him, he did have understanding, and it's because he wasn't a coach, just a coach. He's a guy that had coached for so long and seen so much. So when you coach for so long and see that much, kind of like Bill Belichick, he didn't play football, but he's seen so much. And it's just like, I can understand how you feel a little bit. I can I can put myself in your shoes a little bit. And so I think Coach Boards did a pretty good job with that. But you can't see all because uh -huh. you just haven't played the level. You, you don't know exactly, but you can get an idea of, like, what you're thinking, how you're feeling, different things like that. And I think Coach Borges, he would be understanding sometimes. Because he was he was honestly, he's like, hey, man, he's like, Sam, that's a that's Well, a this bleep. is nice, Borges, yeah, though. Yeah, he's like, that's a bleep. 
right there, yeah. Sam. To, to uh, he said, I get it. I a get how this yeah, happened. A bleep, yeah, I get it. Okay, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's definitely a bleep. It's a bleep. That's a that's a son of a bleep. You know. Yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. So mm-hmm. one of those things that he'll be better for because he's seen it now. But the thing is, it hurts so much because now you got an interception in the red zone, right? And, and as much as you flush it and you let it go, it's still in the back of your mind, right? So that's that's the tough part about it. But like like Ward was saying, like it's it's that's tough. That's yeah, a tough. I, play. I think I think, and I don't know this, but I think this is <clears> when <throat> it kind of it's like, man, I gotta get that. Back. I gotta get that. I back. gotta get that back. Now, mm-hmm. I don't know that, but that's just how I felt watching them. So okay. let's go to the second interception. The uh, one thing that we didn't see though, we didn't see his feet get antsy. We didn't see his head go left to right, to left to right, to left to right. He stayed with the plan that he's usually used, well, that he's used this in the beginning of this year and obviously going back to last year at the end of the season. All right, so the second interception. All right, so this is where you're going to see it's similar to the first one just on a grander scale and how how important depth of the defense is, right? And so when you have a nub side, when I say nub side, I mean a tight end that doesn't have a receiver outside him, right? And that's what you're going to have on, on this uh, double post. So let's just leave it frozen right there. The tight end doesn't have a receiver outside, right? So that's a nub side. So you got that safety pretty low. So the idea is to take this uh, tight end and uh, grab the attention of the safety just standing right outside the hash there. Uh-huh. Once he does that, that makes the depth of the defense extremely Low, I guess you could say. It's low. There's no depth to the defense, right? So right now, if I'm J.J., I want to start thinking I can get Roman because he's running away across the field and they don't have any depth to the defense, if that makes sense, right? So the tight, tight end is going to occupy that guy. Draw the depth of the defense, so, shout. And it's the same view, and, and I don't know. That could have been like, hey, I just had this and I threw a pick on in the red zone. But it's like it's bigger now. So he doesn't have as much. He can't run and go get. The, he's already, he's only standing on the goal line. He only got 10 yards to go and fall back and make that interception on the goal line. But here he has a, we, a, a long way to go. That's a new this, devil. This I didn't is, tell you that. This is why, first of all, you know, you're my guy anyway. Even if you wasn't smart, I still love you. But you're smart. <laughs> Even if I was a dummy, you will love me. I love you anyway. Oh, right? I love you anyway. But you just linked together what he was probably thinking. Mm-hmm. The last time I didn't check the I I didn't check depth of the defense world, or maybe not didn't check it, but I got I got burned, right? They got me. He fell off and made that play. Okay, this time the idea is for Roman to take him out. And on that play in the red zone, I think the idea was for him to take him out, but he just popped. Mm-hmm. Right? He popped open. He's like, oh I can't go to Cornelius now. I have to throw this open guy. Oh man, he got me. Yeah. And then now on this play, it's a grander scale and it's like Ah, let me just follow what the play is supposed to do, right? He's the clear out, and I'm going to throw it, right? And so I think that that's part of why it – you know what I mean? I think I think you – now, again, you don't like me to, to ask him. <laughs> you don't like me to ask the coaches uh, I mean, or I the players if, if you're right. But I bet you you're right. I yeah. bet you you're right. I, hell, I'm going to have to ask J.J. about this. <laughs> right. I don't see – and if I'm right, I mean – I'm going to ask him. I'm going to ask him. So, but let it run, though. Uh, we're going to see the, the interception. And, and this is another good play by the D.B., uh, but Roman runs scot free because there's no depth to the defense, um, and and like we just talked about, that could be a reason of like, man, I got burned last time. Let me just go to the post because, and I'm sure, guess who probably came to the sideline after that pick and said they was open? Roman? Cor- no, Cornelius. Oh, you talking about the first one? Zone, like, yeah, hey man, yeah. I was open on it because th- I think maybe that's the way the play is supposed to be designed, right? This because Roman is the decoy. Why do you use Roman as decoy? Pause it for a second. He's got the most speed, right? And when he could take. When we run daggers, right, where you got to clear out and then a dig underneath and different things like that, he's got the most speed. But I want to talk – oh, this is uh, – yeah, yeah. So you, Roman is the guy that should get the ball because there's no depth of the defense, right? But take a look at the DB on, on Cornelius Johnson. He's got eyes on the quarterback and depth, right? He is running back, so he can see everything happening more so than Cornelius can, right? He can't truly – Cornelius is still trying to run his route, and the DB is lifting, 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 and he can see everything that's happening. And that's why he's able to jump in front. And so on the field, I thought he was a middle safety because he just – he attacked the ball as if he was standing in the middle and he just wanted to go make the catch. And then I'll go watch the field, and I'm like, oh, he was covering him and jumped in front. So the ball should go to Roman Wilson here. And and I, I truly don't think there is a throw to get it to uh, Cornelius Johnson. But Roman Wilson, with no depth to the defense, like I just explained, that's where the ball should go. And so this is a great learning point for, for J.J. It's like, hey, because my whole thing was always, even with Borges and with um, uh, Coach Nuss, we had same similar plays because still kind of the West Coast offense. Um, at the snap, peek over there to see what you're going to have, the depth. 
Check the depth. Is the corner back? Is he in three? Is he up? Is he is he even there? Right? Check that first so you can have an idea of like, hey, I can get this guy running away across the field. It's the hardest thing to cover. We see Tyreek Hill. Well, we saw Tyreek. I mean, he's still doing it. But even with the, with the Chiefs, it was way more where he's running across the field. You can't cover a guy sprinting across the field because there's a two-way go when you're in the slot. You understand that? So when you check that depth of the defense right away, you can have an idea. And then obviously throughout the drop, you have to confirm what you saw. Right. But you now have an idea of like, hey, they don't have any depth, so I can probably get that throw. And if I can't, I just go to my next read, which is the post. But we don't know. I know you're going to ask, but I'm just, you know. No, I think you're probably right. (laughs) You see the depth. Like he could have thrown Roman all the way across the field, pretty much to the end zone. Because, you know, JJ, one of the things that we've talked about, we talk about the things that we see. And I just let this play again for people who want to go through it again while we talk. The things that you know about him, notice about him early on, like he's unflappable. The the moment doesn't seem to yeah, bring him down, yeah. right? And then, but you noted know last year when when he was on a dagger, he hit the alert. Mm-hmm. He hit the post. Mm-hmm. He was like, I never threw that. I never threw it. Mm-hmm. Right? But here he is, new starter, and he hitting it right now. Mm-hmm. So it's not like he had, he always, I'm just going to go where the With play. The right, yeah, of course. What, of course. what it's supposed to do. I'm, I'm actually running the play, mm-hmm. every aspect of the play. So for him to not do that, this has to be a reason for him to not do that this time. And I think you nailed it, man. I think you nailed it. I think that's You know, exactly I had that it. when we was doing the film in there. I had that already, but I just wanted to save it to see a reaction here. <laughs> I think you're exactly right. More, yeah. than, more than what I suspected is like, hey, man, I'm just trying to make up for it mm-hmm. in one play. It was, hey, man, I just got... I just got to inter- in the I red threw, zone. I just threw an interception on this. Not concept. not just because all interceptions aren't weighted equally. That interception right here is not even close to the red zone. You take points off the board when you throw an interception in the red zone, right? And so it kind of sticks with you a little more. It's a little. It, it hurts a little more. But I don't know. It could be other things. But I think that is part of. It's not everything, but I think it's something. I think it's part of what um, the idea, the thought process might have no, been. No, I think the Monday morning quarterback, even though he's a little under the weather, is on his game. Oh, I'm always on my game. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's I, that's some. Good I need stuff to be on right my there. water game. That's the problem, though. I yeah. need to stop being dehydrated. Yeah, that's some good stuff right there, man. I don't even think Boyd just came up with that one. Well, of course he didn't. I don't even think Boyd just came up with Borges that one. ain't really looking at the field like I'm looking Borges, at the field. So, so let's let me get what Boyd just said, and I'll let you get. I'll let him kind of give his theory mm. on it a little bit later. But he he said the second interception. JJ tried to aerial flinch the flat defender. To open the post, and it took his eyes off the alert to Roman. That's a good idea, but I think Borges is wrong. So I remember I told you I noticed his eyes go away for a second too. So Borges thinks he's trying to entice the flat defender, but you don't need to because the tight end he's covering the tight end right, and there's so much more space. Like he can't be backing up and just leave a wide open guy. I think that he peeked down, so he took a snapshot. Right, imagine a camera. Right, you take a snapshot of what's going on downfield. Boom! I know that I'm going to have the post because Roman did his job. Right. I know I'm going to have to post snapshot because Roman did his job. But when they had the blitz are coming and Blake Horn did an outstanding job of picking up the blitz. Right. He chops him down. But sometimes you chop a guy down, he leaks on. And so he I think he peeked to see if he had enough space to make sure he doesn't get hit while he's throwing. And then just went back to the snapshot and threw it. And then you got now nah, you got issues. You understand that? And that's not like an uncommon thing. That's a thing. Like you take a snapshot. I know what I got. Right. You check to, you know, do whatever you're going to do. Check a move a guy with your eyes or whatever. And then you throw it. Right, and so Steve Young has a quote where he talks about, dude, you gotta let it fly. Like you can't play quarterback hesitating, right? And he and, and I love that about this play that he didn't hesitate. Now, would we have wanted to throw it to Rowan? Of course, for a touchdown, right? We, we have run him to maybe even take a sack in hindsight, right? Yeah, take the sack because he won't throw the interception. But I love that he has conviction, right? He boom check, I got enough space, throw it because of the snapshot, but it just didn't work out. All right, so then let's go to. When it does work out, he 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 hit the post. It was the series after this where they mm-hmm. had ran back to back play action passes, and and more a lot of credit has to go to Sharon Moore because you know your quarterback and you make sure your quarterback still has con- and and it's almost a little bit of I want to check to see if he still got the confidence right. So he throws that ball in into uh Colson Loveland a dart. Right in between two defenders. Right, so it's like okay, that's your JJ. We know he's still good. Right, and mm-hmm. then all right, since you hit that one. Here's another, right? Mm-hmm. Let's go play action again. And then he drives it uh, on on Roman Wilson's chest. I mean, but the the more important, obviously, he's an open guy, and Jay is going to hit an open guy. I want to highlight Roman Wilson, man. This dude is running nice routes. So we thinking he fast, he just running, right? Nah. he he. You remember how Ronnie Bell has some savviness in the way he's running his routes? Mm-hmm. 
Roman got some savviness in the way that he runs his routes, and you couple that with great speed, that's tough, man. That is tough. And you remember, it was two years ago. Who, who did I compare him to? Do you remember? Roman? Yeah. I don't remember. I compared him to Chris Olave. I thought I thought that highly of him, and I think obviously he got six touchdowns, seven touchdowns, and we ain't playing nobody yet. But this is gonna translate versus anybody. I com- I compared him to Chris Olave because of his ability to, with speed and right, he makes big catches, all these different things. But I think the the sky's the limit for Roman Wilson. But this savviness in this route that you're about to see is second to none, right? Second to none, and, and I learned it when I was played a little receiver from Jeremy Gallon and. And uh, uh, we're round tree. It's head nods at the top, right? So, boom. Pause it. Don't even show our drawing or anything. Look at his helmet. His helmet is facing out. And so, bad wide receivers or receivers that aren't good at running routes, they start to look where they're going before they go. Right? And DBs are taught this. His eyes going there. Bet. Right? Because he ain't running right good. He's not a good route runner. So Roman's body, now you can let the, the thing play. Roman's body is still going vertical, and he started his eyes early. Why do you do that? Because you want to make it look like you're running a bad route. That's exactly what you want to do in route running. Make him believe you're, oh, yeah, I'm a terrible route runner. Yeah, bite on this, please. So his eyes are outside. His body language is still forward, right? So what does that do to the GB? He like, I got him. I'm going to jump it. And, and what else have we seen? Corner routes. Right, we we did a whole deal on it because it's elementary concepts with gradual level execution. Remember that? Mm-hmm. We were on a bunch of smash versions of smash. So this guy's watch film. And he like, uh, he's going again. Right, we've seen it run the corner. He's going again, and he gets him to react, and then he takes it back to the post. I mean, this is outstanding teach tape for how to run a post a corner post. Outstanding teach tape. If you want to learn how to run a corner post, come to more than one quarterback. Watch the film study, and you can skip all the way through if you want. And go to this part of the film. This is outstanding. Eyes outside. And then he takes a couple more steps right forward before he even starts to break. Then he takes his right foot, sticks in the ground, goes to the corner, and then he comes back to the post and he's scot free, wide open. Boom. Baseball turned to DB and all that. DB, like, oh gosh. <laughs> this boy is yeah, on another cancel level. Christmas. It's over. Cancel Christmas. Good night, Irene. <laughs> My goodness. Elizabeth, this is the big one. I'm coming to join you. All right, all right. So that brings us and to... obviously a nice throw by JJ, and it proved he still got his confidence. He ain't he ain't withering because he threw whatever, whatever, uh, and, and he drives it right on his numbers. Outstanding throw. Yeah. Down the so field. kudos, gotta be passed out again to <laughs> Sharon for hey, I'm hey, you get back to him. Hey, Just like you, you got to drop a ball, right? Get back to him. You want to make sure he keeps his confidence. Don't get down on yourself. Stay aggressive. So that gets us to the third interception, Devin. Where there's there's that line that you want to maintain as a great athlete, quarterback, Mm -hmm. player. Playmaker. You can can make these plays that regular human beings can't make, Mm -hmm. right? So got to find that line and not cross it without sapping your aggression. How do you do that? The example I've kind of used is uh, Michael Jordan, and and I got it from Colin Coward. I've used it on TV. I've talked to coaches and said, hey, your quarterback's doing this. Think of it like this, man. And so this is the idea of – Michael Jordan, when he scores 40, every play ain't amazing, right? It's free throws, mid-range jumpers. And then there's three of – so 35 of it is mid-range jumpers and free throws and layups, right? Fast break layups maybe. And then maybe three or four plays to finish out that 40 is right hand to the left through the lane, uh, behind the – you know what I mean? Something mm-hmm. amazing that we've seen nobody else do. But he got to that point – because he just hit his layups and whatever. Like, the, the, all the plays aren't going to be spectacular. When I threw for 500 yards against Indiana, it wasn't – I mean, it was a lot of spectacular plays because they was just acting crazy. Just the defense is so low, I'm throwing it over your head. But a lot of it was – some of it was screen, right? Some of it was hitting a curl here. Or they lifted the coverage. I could throw it to the corner, you know what I mean? So, I, I just think that if more talented people think like that, of like, I don't have to be the talented, amazing player all the time. But when the time comes, I can do that. You know what I mean? And and I think JJ has a really good handle on that. Yeah, he uh, he said as much after the game. This is the the interception where he's <clears throat> running uh, toward the um, left. Yeah, he he's he's running toward the sideline, um, the west sideline, and I'm not good with directions, but I understand. Yeah, he's running toward the <laughs> west sideline, and as he's going out of bounds, <clears throat> does he spot 
He spots Coast yeah. him and try to throw it him. to him, or does does he try to throw it out of bounds and just made it too close? So I'm gonna tell you what it what it was, in my opinion. So on the all twenty two, you'll see as he's rolling. I'm sure he's thinking, I'm outside the pocket, I can throw it away at any time, so I'm gonna use as much speed as I can. I'm gonna keep running until maybe somebody pops open. Colston, and this is not like uh, against Colston, right? This is just Colston trying to work for his quarterback. And I think Colston did a good job, but now they can talk about this and say, hey, I'm gonna do this next time to make sure that and they would have a completion. Colston took a, started on an angle behind the defensive back, and then he snapped it off flat, which is good. Right, because now you snap it off in front of his face. DB thought, I mean, uh, just like a route, you go post and then come back. The DB thought you were going behind him, so he's off balance. He come underneath. Well, when he starts on that track, he starts to throw. But once he flattens, I'm sure he sees him, and as he's throwing, he like, I want to get it out now. And now you throw a ball that's way too high. It's kind of going out of bounds, but not quite going out of bounds. And now you're kind of in no no man's land, right? So when he starts to throw right there. Colson had took that backtrack, right? And I don't think it would have been complete. I mean, obviously, Colson, a big dude, he probably would have been able to jump and body the safety behind him to make the catch. But he takes that track and then he snaps it off and, it's, and, he's, and he's open. And, and so you can see JJ's frustrated, as he should be, but not with Colston. He's frustrated with himself. It's like, okay, just because he's open don't mean he got to get the ball. I can throw this ball away and live to fight another down. If that makes sense, right? Mm. But that's an outstanding play by that DB. I mean, he jumped so high. So it, it, and I'm, I'm listen, sitting, so I'm right behind this. Like, so I'm not, I'm kind of next to the camera, and I see this whole thing unfolding. And at the time, I'm like, man, just throw it away. So, so you can, you can identify because you were a quarterback, you were an athletic <clears throat> quarterback, you can make plays like mm-hmm. this. Jim Harbaugh is a, a quarterback who can make plays mm-hmm. like this. I wonder what his reaction will be because after the game, Sharon was like, "You got to throw that ball out of bounds." Of course. Period. And and JJ was like, I've made this mistake. He what he said was, I've made this mistake in practice. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't make this mistake in a game. Yeah. I'm throwing this ball out of bounds. Mm-hmm. Period. Yeah, and I think that's a good decision. Right? That'd be a good decision. But I can I'm telling you what's going through a quarterback's mind. Right? You your plan is to throw the ball away. You see your guy take a track where you can get a big play, you're going for the big play. Like as much as we we wanna say that we don't do this. We see it every single day, especially with guys that move around. When you get outside the pocket, that's when all the big plays happen, right? And so you can't crucify him for this and still want all those big plays that he creates on the outside the pocket, right? Because if we go by the ratio and the number of big plays outside the pocket to mistakes, what is, it, is the ratio in favor of big plays or is it mistakes? For I'm talking yeah. for him specifically, not other quarterbacks. For J.J. in particular, when he starts to create outside the pocket, that's – that's where he's the most dangerous, in my opinion. Obviously, he's become very dangerous from within the pocket. But when he starts to move outside the pocket, that's when he becomes very dangerous. So I think the coaching point is, hey, just throw this one away. Yep, 31-6. We don't need this big play. Second down and five. You can, We'll go get five yards on the next play. Just throw this one away. But we don't want to take that skill from you. Yeah, I mean, you you made the point that first year when he <laughs> – <clears throat> He throws all the way across the field. From the numbers right? all the way outside the other Right, where he, he can make that play. So you want, and Harbaugh said, if he can make that play, you got to let him make that play. But but, but what's the what's control. the balance? I think the balance here is, all right, man, you got two defenders bearing down on you right here in your face, and you're running out of bounds. You know, the time, place. You know, there, yeah. there are times where you could where you could do this. Mm-hmm. Maybe, mm-hmm. maybe if the defender ain't in your face. Yeah. You could throw this, but yeah. this time, throw it out of bounds. Yeah, but the thing is, is like, I think he's earned for the coach to. It ain't a hammer and beat yeah, down I don't type think of thing. They are. It's just like, hey man, listen, you got to weigh the risk and reward here, right? If you, I'm still, le- I, they can't like, hey, take the decision out. The decision is still yours. You're the in the arena. You're the quarterback. You you're the guy that's making the decisions. But I just need you to make a better decision on this play where. Maybe just maybe this one is dead. And the thing is, he's done a good job of that. Let's like, like but in this game, like we talked about, you two picks to. in, you want, and it ain't about the highs. And people saying, oh, he's trying to whatever. It ain't about the highs. It's about that's at my nature. I'm a playmaker. And when I get outside the pocket, that's when I make my plays. I make a lot of big good plays, big plays out of the pocket. And so he wants to make a play, and it's just like, hey, just not this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, to Not a to point mention, you yeah, made yeah. earlier where you said, look, they weren't going to lose this game. They were going to win it comfortably, <coughs> mm-hmm. and they were up at this point. But, you know, you want to you end the game, your portion of the game anyway, on a clean mm-hmm. note. You do. 
yeah. you know, to 100%. take you into the next game without that kind of taste in your mouth. Yeah. So, you know. But One hey, of those now, hey, now JJ got a three pick game, <laughs> and, and you know if he ever has mistakes again, which at some point he's gonna make a mistake, they're gonna always try to point back. Oh yeah, he threw picks in that game, and then the, you know the TCU game where how, how many picks he threw in the TCU game? He threw two pick sixes. All right, two two pick two pick sixes. That was made it yeah. real bad. If it was just regular picks, it might have yeah. been all right. Right, two picks. Yeah, he just turns the ball over. But then it's like. You have those two instances, and then the TCU guy, remember, I told you that was the greatest response from adversity, right, because he got us in position to get a chance to win. And in this game, we obviously blew Bowling Green out, so the, the picks, they hurt us, but they didn't truly hurt us, like, in the grand scheme of things. But they're always going to go back to these, and, and the thing is, he has to be okay with that because that's just how it works, right? You're yeah, the scrutiny man. for the quarterback, and not only the quarterback, the quarterback at Michigan is huge. And, and the confirmation bias of we always thought the reason you couldn't play is because you turned the ball over too much. Though you have a long resume of not turning the ball over too much, right? We saw you in the in the TCU game turn the ball over just twice, but it was two big turnovers in that game. And we broke that down and showed how those could be avoided. And then in Bowling Green, you have these. So all yeah. the all the all the the scoundrels are gonna come out crawling out. They weren't saying anything, but now they're gonna come out. Yeah, man, yeah. I told you. That's why he the guy. That's why it should have been somebody else. That's why he shouldn't be the quarterback. He just he can't protect the ball ignoring, and those people are crazy, right? Those are people are irrational and you can't argue with them because they're goofy. Because there's actual <laughs> facts out there that when it goes touchdown to interception ratio, he's one of the best in the country, right? And, I mean, I'm not at this moment just because he threw the three picks in one game, but in, on the grand scheme of things, since he's been the starter, when you look at everybody in the country, he don't turn the ball over, right? But they're going to ignore those facts because they're crazy and you can't argue with them. They're irrational yeah. and they can't be trusted. Yeah, man, I, I work hard to make sure <clears throat> that bias, the personal bias does not enter into mm -hmm. the analysis to the point where it distorts it. I'm talking of about course. me, not you. I'm talking about me. Yeah. But I know this dude. And I think there there are times where that personal kind of feeling or feel for a guy mm -hmm. actually colors the analysis. I'll give you a perfect example. That Michigan State game back in, what was it, 12? Was mm. it 12 when you were up there? Me? Yeah. Receiver? When I was playing receiver? Quarterback. Twelve had to be. A, w w was I playing? Oh, it's in the thirteen. Game? Yeah, you was. Yeah, it must have been thirteen. Oh, when they was there. killing me. Oh, you didn't want to bring so it I up. I, I, I respect you not want to bring it because you could have just said that time they was killing <laughs> you. I, I respect that, Sam. I appreciate you, brother. But I got on the air that Monday after the game, and I was like, "Look, man. So y'all need to understand something about the dude out there that was playing quarterback. That grew up in the projects, like, like that. that, that like got, had it. Got like, that's his, the least of my worries. Got like his going head up. kicked in. Yeah." Spitting up blood on the sideline, yeah. and they and carrying begging him. to go in, still. and they and they carrying them. And I said, you know, I'm never one to say play dirty, but somebody got to get a, a, a personal foul penalty <laughs> yeah, or something. Yeah, of course, on but, that game that day. You know, one thing is though, they they played clean though. They they, they was not. They was just I, knocking I the ball right. That's not my. Yeah, that wasn't my you. point. That was my my point is. Y'all getting y'all ass kicked, and he getting his ass kicked more as a result. Yeah. Somebody got to do it something. So, so bringing to the fore, A, the kind of duress that you were under. But know something about this man that he wasn't pointing fingers. I never did, not once. Have you ever heard me point a finger at somebody? I've never heard you point a finger. And, and you know for a fact, because you be with Borges, <laughs> that a lot of that garbage was, you know, yeah. I ain't, you know let's not get into it. Yeah. We're not getting to these rants. We not, but, but my point is, and he yeah. kept getting back up. Going back out on the field. Mm -hmm. So know that about him. We were him protected we, with seven, yeah. and they were bringing four, and they was killing me. Yeah, so know that about the dude. What you talking about? Our oh, people have been begging me. Hey, can you get can you get Devin to talk some more some more behind the scenes <laughs> stuff? Man, because you went on. Hey, man. First of all, that wasn't scripted, by the that way. That wasn't. I just. I don't, what happened? What made me act like that? What made I don't me even get? Know. I, don't I don't know. Even know. All I know is like it just it just really bugs me because you know because just like how when you go in these press conferences. As a quarter, you're supposed to take the blame. And it's like the, the media takes that, and they say, yeah, even he said it was all his fault type of thing. And it's just like, well, but this didn't exist, right? Yeah, you gotta, Now, you can, yeah. JJ can say what he want, but we're going to watch this film, and we're going to decide, is he just taking the blame because he's taking the blame? Or it could have been, you know, mm -hmm. other blame to go around, you know what I mean? But I shouldered the whole load, and, I'm, and I was fine with that because I knew what I signed up for. And guess who explained that to me before I even got a chance to be the guy? Denar. He said, if you, this is what you want to do, you got to know. It's going to be all your fault. Right, and you can't alienate people by blaming people. And first of all, that's not what that's not what a man does. That's not what a leader of anything does. You can't go, 
you the CEO of Domino's or whatever. You can't go because y'all have a bad quarter saying how this underneath person did this and whatever. No, no, no. It's you. It's you and you need to get it fixed, right? And so that's what I did. And and I was punished for it. I couldn't believe it. I said these media people, this, but that's the confirmation bias. We wanted to we wanted that to be the thing, and so then we confirmed it, and now it's all good. But nah, I can talk about it now. Nah. <laughs> Y'all can't just oh, I'm in the media as well. You can't just say what you want. And and you know, like the Rico Beer dude, he said in that game that I quit. That's what he said. I heard I didn't know about it, but I heard about it through like obviously I would never watch anything he does or anything like that, but I think it was it might have been Jeff Bodden told me or somebody told me, and I'm just like, I'm sorry, and I, sh- I shot him a tweet. You seen me and smiled in my face, brother. You know, they think you know Devin and Derek. You know, it's just I'll talk with you about this, but <laughs> it's just like you don't get to say what you go want to say now. I'm not a player anymore. I don't have a group of men that I have to lead. You can say what you want, but you have to know that I'm coming back, and we're gonna confirm some things, and then you're gonna look like a coward, which he does. So, but that's you know, DG. It's always been fun. Man, we've been doing... I got I got to go. <laughs> you got me here all the time, right? You been trying to get me going, I, man. I, I didn't know you were going to go there. <laughs> unscripted moment. People want more unscripted moments, but there you go. All right, folks. So listen, what do I always say on these videos? We do not own the footage that we use in these film studies. Mm-hmm. Because of that, we seek no advertising. We get no kind of sponsorship at all for these videos. That means we are making no money. But, but... What we do do is we set up a fundraiser page. Fund the film study. You can fund the film study by clicking that PayPal link. That's right there in the comments. We'll pin it right to the top. It's also in the description. Go there and show some love. We can keep these film studies going. We can keep Devin in the life in which he's become accustomed. He's moving up to a deluxe apartment in the sky with <laughs> penthouse and, and all that, the sauna and the man. He can't be trusted. He can't be trusted. Don't believe nothing he's saying. I ain't got no money. Don't believe him. Hey, we got, we got it. My point is, it costs. It do cost. It, it, you you got to pay the price, right? So, come on. You can help out with the film study by clicking that PayPal link. And we'll be back, we'll be back next week for another edition of the Michigan Football Film Study Monday Morning Quarterback Style with Devin Gardner.